this here. And um, what's Ekram? Ekram is East Coast Rock Tree Me. Are you sure? Original one. Extremely cold, rainy meat. Extremely cold, windy meat. Um, <coughs> yeah. We've had rain, we've had wind, we've had everything. So the beginning idea was that Jim Fuller, who's the contest director, and I are like, okay, this is Ekram 40. And Ekram 25, we make pens. So at Ekram 40, we make pens. I thought it would be nice to do a, a booklet, to which I hope Mark will be nice to do a So I contacted some of the past several CDs, the contestants, the old, you know, old Narhams members, and I thought, I need to start compiling some things. Um, I asked at Steel City, hey guys, if you guys got, have pictures of former Ekrams, come to me. So I started putting this stuff together. Um, in the meantime, the Narhams president made a nice opening letter, the current CD made a letter. This is the beginning of a nice booklet, which is 22 pages, and somewhere up here. Got handed out if you came to the Extremely Cold Rainy Week, or the East Coast Rocket Tree Week. You got this nice booklet filled with pictures and history and other fun things. Only 40 were printed on purpose. So why? I mean, the NAR is 55 years old, Ekrim is 40, 40 Ekrims have been done. You got people who are getting up there in age, some of them have passed, who ran this, and um, you need to report the data. And as the um, NAR historian, I thought, oh, this is a good project for me to start with, something small, local, that I, could, I had access to people. So what information do you want to collect? Well, the current and a narrow history when you go to the website is you can contest director location division wins, winners and section winners. And the best member of the world. Well, I wanted to add events because everybody always goes, what was the first event at Aaron won, blah, 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 blah. So let's see how much I can figure out. I left blanks on purpose because I knew I couldn't get everything. And for most people who ever do research, if you have blanks and you start publishing it, the first thing you can do is you make people going, oh, no, no, wait, that's not right. So when I left captions missing, but I didn't know anybody. Well, what was already out there? Lev Schmacher, as Why Us, at Nero 40, had created a magazine index. She went through all the NAR publications, American Space Modeling, and had come up with an index of who wrote it, what it was, the short things. I had created an index from the Zod 43s. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Narhams has been around since March 1965. It is the oldest continuing model rocket club in the NAR. Naira and some of the other ones are older, but they've gone to Funks for a couple of years and then they come back. We've been an NAR section since 1965, so we've had a lot of history. And I have some of the first SOG 43s. And I index all the, all the uh, articles. That helped. In the NARA 50, Ted Ha, Tom Ha, and I had created the kitchen sink CD. So there's some Ekron 5 pictures in there. And uh, some of the older NAR publications are on CD, so I went through some more rocketeers for that. So I got photos from Jim and Judy Barrowman, Glenn Fabrier, Chris Kidwell, Ed Pearson, Tom Lyons, Scott Alexander, Jim Filler. I had information from some of these guys as well. And every now and then, you got great other tidbits. This is a picture of the Ekron 8 patch from Jim Barrowman's jacket. I happen to have it in my closet because he gave it to me. Um, but it was like, oh, look, April 74. Patches can't be wrong, can they, near 31 patch? <laughs> <laughs> so here's an example of one of the pages that I created. You notice the Ekron 1, 1967, I had no information. Um, Ekron 2, you go through, you have Jim Barrowman, Ekron 7. I was still confused whether it was Ed Pearson or Judy Barrowman. I've gone back and forth. Um, I also put an event key in there, and yes, we can sit here and debate it, what the event key is, because really, how many people here, under the age of 40, know what a Hawk, a Hawk RG, Hawk BG, cluster <laughs> of SD means? <laughs> so I, I put that in there thinking, okay, I think this is what it is. Plus, it's fun. You know? Our events, they're going to look at our events and go, what's CDEA? So I thought it was kind of an interesting thing to do. How do I know if it was correct? I was getting all my information from Zog 43s. I also got it from Space Modeling. When I was trying to find some of the missing Ekrams, 
that had gone to Novar, where Novar was alternating between Mars and Ekram, I'd gone through and found Kim Brown with a certain Ekram and the events over and over again. I said, okay, I think that's really truly what it was. I left it blank if I couldn't find it. Um, I do need to see, supposedly, Tom Lyon has handed Steve Humphrey all this information. It's got to get scanned. But I've also, once I published some of this, I got some emails from um, some people. So I got some new info. The first one was Jim and Judy, after they looked at this, said, hey, we agree Carl Kratzer is the Akron 1 CD. He was a high school student at Civilian Security in 40 AP Hill. Great, you know, Jim, Jim Barrowman helped, was our section advisor because the current NA, the NAR board at the time just couldn't trust a bunch of high school kids on a section. I think that Markham's had a reputation. So here's a picture that Jim had scanned for me, and I had labeled it. The guy in the center, I think, is Jim Barrowman. Why? Well, because he has a Markham's jacket. Actually, that looks an awful lot like the one I have in mine. What was it? No, nope. from Jim, he goes, nope, that's actually Bruce Blackstone, and the fellow next to him is Paul Connor. I was like, okay. When he told me that, I went, yeah, okay, that looks, that looks a lot of Bruce. And I know you guys really wanted to see the picture, right? So here's another one that Jim's like, oh, this is great. The guy in the red is Howard Galloway, and the woman to the back is Donnie Galloway. Now, Judy had said, you know, the first Ephraim, I walked around, I had Julie, it was great. Ekram 2 on, Ekram 2 on, Dottie Galloway and Judy Barrowman were the Chris Kidwells and computer of the day. <laughs> they did a data reduction. Um, so here's a picture of the Ekram brief that I originally thought maybe it was Ed Pearson, but I wasn't sure. But I had just said Ekram 5 briefing photo. And he goes, nope, that's me in the microphone, my trusty Ford Fairlane in the foreground, running the PA system. So, okay, great. So here's another mystery one, and there should be a picture of somebody in here. I've been told this is uh, Steve Cranch, who I have met. So uh, anybody recognize the guy in the white pants? Trip Barber. <laughs> Whoa. That is Trip. <laughs> also, the model of here is Trip Barber with a scale model, so he wants to scale the floor.
find two of the missing Ephraims that knew of our ran. So future work. Well, Tom Lyons got a lot of Ephraims in the pictures that he hasn't gotten to get to me yet. And I need to sit down and do an oral history of Jim and Ed Pearson. And any of you who ran or helped either competed in the early Ephraims and might remember what you did back then, go ahead and contact me. Um, I really need to start looking through other public newsletters. Tom Lyon handed me the Narhams Library when he did all these uh, exchanges. I just did the Zog 43 index. I hadn't started the Nova Press or anything else. I think that was it. It was a fun thing to do. Lots of cool pictures. Uh, Tom and Bob printed it up for me. And that was just a smattering. So, any questions?
here's your division winners, here's where it was located, here's your CD. It's nice to know events too. You mentioned having a little uh, through the newsletter archives. Any, any thought of uh, archiving actual newsletters like on the CD or DVD? Well, if you've got your near 50 kitchen sink CD, you would have gotten the first five years of the Zogs, and you would have gotten the Zog Index. Most of the Zogs, as I scan them, I give them to Chris Kidwell, and if uh, the Narham's website handles it, I'm most of them work there, as I find missing ones. So it's an ongoing thing, like any history project. Anybody who's ever done history or historian knows that it's never finished. Questions from the audience? Do I get to pick your yeah, you, you, you call. his hand up first. taking steps to secure this information for the future so that other people don't have to repeat all this work. Yes. And are you, um, have you considered working with maybe some portion of the NAR to create a central publicly accessible depository so that people can add information to this forever? That would be my area on the NAR web. I just had told Bruce how much, he goes, how much space do you need? And I kind of laughed at him. I uh, gave him a number. Space so, yeah, is cheap. At some point it'll start to come in and like anything, even when you put stuff into the Smithsonian, they just don't automatically shut it up wherever they go through it, they archive it, you've got a curator, and I have enough friends that are either librarians or historians that I know about the whole how to keep things protected, what you have to do with acid free stuff. So that's probably what will happen is that most of it will go online and of course being the system administrator I am I have backups and backups. Cool. Sean. When uh, obviously the history has to come from all of us do when you get would you take, to get information, would you take this in physical format, digital format, or, or would you take it anyway? I would prefer it in digital if you've already got it scanned. If you don't have access to that, uh, talk to me and we'll see who, who can ship stuff when my husband's not around. Um, but well, you know, I don't just, everybody starts sending me boxes. My husband is just like, really? Really? <laughs> and the question was, I'll just compare it to the Star Wars toy, so we'll be okay. And the question wasn't just for me, but in general, to, to, to um, If you have a stack of newsletters and you've got insomnia one night, start indexing them. If you want to see how to do the index, go to narhams.org and look at how I did the Zog 43 index. You go into the library and you go to Zog 43 newsletters. Um, and I can give you some tips if you're, hey, how do I want to do this? And I can just tell you, this is my format. You come up with a format. We'll Do you think the booklet and the cool culture that surrounds Akron is one of the reasons that it's like one of the biggest regional meets today? It is the biggest last year. It's like is that part of it, like, why it's so successful. Well, we do have fun, especially when you never know if you're going to get the cold, the rain, the wind, or sun. Yeah. So, you know, I, have we had it snow at Akron too? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had the S and the snow sleet. I, I, when when uh, you talk to 
Ed and Judy, and I read some of the other newsletters. It's always funny when they're like, limit first 75 competitors get to come to Ekrem 7. You know, come get your you know, dorm room. So you're like, okay. <laughs> so you'd have regionals where people are scraping. So I think part of it's the fun and part of it is uh, just the history of it. Why are we here 755? Why do we keep coming here?